That was close. What are you doing, Susan? I asked the girl while catching my breath. She whimpered a bit, but not to confirm she is fine. Well, you must be wondering how we both got here and what we are doing. It wasn't too long ago that everything happened, so let me tell you a bit about it. Remember the last time I ran to the window to see what Susan saw? Yeah, that's what made us flee. A large number of zombies were coming toward us through the fog. To be honest, it wasn't their number that scared me, but the unusual sense of dread I felt from them. I told Susan to pack up. I know she barely rests after her last unfortunate event, but we could not afford to delay any longer. We ran away as soon as we could. I was expecting to encounter them out front, but there wasn't a single one. Their strange behavior only made the dread I felt even worse. I decide we should head east, since I vaguely remember the gate being in that direction. We encountered many other zombies ahead of us. I wasn't sure if they were the same one that had been heading toward the base. They feel normal. Well, as normal as zombies could be here, but unlike those others. We heard something as we walk, so I decided to look back and realize my decision to flee was right. Those weird zombies were chasing us. How did they catch up so fast? And even worse, why were there so many now? In our blind panic, we missed the road to the gate and ran through the trees instead. Not a moment later, we saw a dirt pathway across the forest. Despite the oddness of the situation, we didn't think much of it since we were running for our lives. We saw a cluster of houses and took refuge in one of them to rest from all the running. There you go. That's how we ended up in this situation. It's been 10 minutes or so since we rest. Well, I don't know the exact time since, you know, the time is stopped. Uh, but anyway, we haven't heard any of the zombies that were chasing us get in here. Did we escape? Well, no you staying put anyway. There isn't anything here. Let's get back to the apartment carefully. Alright, I'm pretty sure this is the path that broke us here. So we are just going to walk straight through. Get yourself ready, Susan. I said, glancing at Susan behind me. What the hell? It's not even a minute and we already reached the other end of the forest. I can't even call it a forest now. Huh? Why is there nothing here? This is strange. I whispered to myself as we continue walking. We stop in our tracks. Let's get back for now. We don't want to get lost in this fog. I say to Susan, who looks as confused as I am. Fortunately, we haven't traveled that far, so the forest is still visible. I am thinking about my option while walking back to the houses. Let's find a place better than the last one we used to hide, I say quietly to Susan. This seemed like a good two-story house. It seemed like there is no one inside, obviously, but you never know. Let's get inside, but don't let your guard down, I whisper quietly. Hmm, no one inside so far. I guess that's normal at this point. Oh, damn, the house has some food left. 
I guess we should barricade the house first. But in our hurry, we forgot to bring most of our tools. So, we decide to go around and look for some tools. We found some kind of garage space that had a box containing almost everything we used to have in terms of tools. That's lucky? We were kind of surprised by how strange this was. Okay, hello everyone, Fatboy here. I'm not spawning this. I do sometimes spawn zombie or other story based requirement like edited items and such, but this one is not mine. I am also surprised here. Oh, <laughs> moving on I guess. Despite the crazy luck we just had, we decided to go around some more to see if we were lucky enough to find anything else. Instead, we encounter our first zombie here. You might be confused, but it's been dead silent since we arrived. And we thought there were not going to be any of them around. Of course, we dealt with them and continue to look around some more. We reach what looked like the end of the town. I can't even consider this a town yet since there are just too few buildings around. So anyway, we went back to the house we chose to start the barricade. At first, I told Susan to stay in the house while I went back to the garage to get the tools. But she refused to be by herself. I guess it makes sense after everything she just experienced, so I let her accompany me after we put our supplies here. There isn't really anything happening to be honest. We just got back to the garage, grabbed the tools and went back. After that, I decided to forage for material outside. I remember a trick to make a crude axe using stones and sticks, binding them with cloth. Since we didn't have an axe yet, this would have to do. She wanted to accompany me again and help, so she foraged around the house, reminding me not to go too far. I was unsure, considering she must really tired after everything. But I didn't want to argue with someone I barely knew anyway. After a while, I successfully collected everything I need to make an axe. So I start chopping down the nearby trees. Using the leftover nails I broke, I asked Susan to help barricade the place now that we had some wood. Yes, I know, I said I feel bad, but her face showed that she really want to help. In the end, she handled the barricading while I continued chopping. Once everything seems secure, I suggest we take a rest. Hopefully for good this time. Uh, is it morning already? I sit, yawning before stopping to look out the window. Wait, morning? I run straight outside to make sure I wasn't hallucinating. It's, it's really morning, I whispered, my voice full of disbelief. Time had resumed. I call out to Susan, overjoyed. She appear looking confused. At first, she thought we were in danger again. But when I explain, her confusion 
turned into mild annoyance, realizing she had not been aware of the situation the whole time. I added, you don't have a watch, do you? She shook her head, must be fallen off when I entered that city where we first met, she said. Knowing that, I had the sight not to explain the situation earlier. I didn't want to stress her out too much. Now that daylight had returned, we decided to continue building the base. Neither of us know much about carpentry, so I suggest we do what I had done at the previous base. Build log walls around the safe house. And that's exactly what we ended up doing. Oh yeah, unfortunately, it wasn't just the sun that returned. The zombie come back too, suddenly emerging from the fog, which I've kinda gotten used to by now. I also took a rusty barrel from the warehouse where we got the tools and cut off the lids to use it as a massive water container. Since the rust made it easier, the job was quick. While building the base, Susan and I split the work, since I would not be able to fight while chopping the trees and holding logs. She decided to handle the combat, and let me tell you, she actually really capable. Once she pull herself together, she definitely not someone you want to cross. It took us a few days, but we finally managed to finish the base without too much trouble. We got the water set up, enough woods for fires, and entire forest to chop down if we need more. The real problem was food. We had a bit left from the reserve we brought during our escape. But it would only last about two weeks if we ration it carefully. Earlier, I explored the area and discovered a road to the north of our base. It seemed like a main road. Maybe if I follow it, I will end up in a town or even better, a city? There had not been any major attack over the past few days that we could not handle. Both Susan and I had fully recovered, stamina-wise. And with the promising road possibly leading to civilization or whatever left of it, we might be able to find something there to boost our supplies. I told Susan that I did manage to forage some seed earlier and she said she thinks a way to start a farm now that we had a water container. Wonderful. Everything seemed like it was going to get better from here. Or so I thought. 